Hello, university season is upon us and those wanting to apply to Oxford and Cambridge, the deadline is very much fast approaching. So welcome to a student room special. This special is going to be for those people who have ambitions to study at one of the world's best universities and how to make sure that your shot, your application, has the best possible chance when it sits in front of an admissions tutor. To add some colour and some credibility to the words of wisdom that I'll be sharing with you in this video, I'm an Oxford graduate. I read philosophy, politics and economics. I graduated in 2014 from Magdalen College and I have been campaigning since I became a student at Oxford to help other people achieve their academic ambitions as I was the first person from my school to go on to study at Oxford. So far I've helped about a million eyeballs through my YouTube channel which collates wisdom from other students at Oxford, Cambridge along with admissions tutors advice to help with everything from the personal statement to interview preparations to entrance exams to choosing your degree and in this video, the student room have challenged me to distill down all of the content that I've created into five top tips. And that's what we're going to be going into next. Everything I say in this video, I will be writing up and making available in a download, which you can find at this link. I will come back to this at the end of the video, but just to give you some peace of mind, you don't have to make extensive notes right now. I just want you to sit back and absorb and think about the content and the recommendations that you're going to find in this video. I am going to be covering how to go about choosing your course, which is incredibly important, how to go about rewriting your personal statement, how to prepare for your interview, how to prepare for the entrance exam, and how to show your passion. So that titillating taste of the tips to come, here is number one. Pick a course and focus on that course. There's so many people who apply who have this internal tension going on, where they really think that they want to study history, for example, but then they also decide to throw in a little bit of medicine because they're torn. If you do this though, it'll come across that you haven't done sufficient preparation, you haven't investigated your course, you haven't read around what it would be entailed, you haven't done any work experience, you haven't done any wider reading, and so your place will just go to someone who actually comes across as someone who has done some thorough research into what it is that they want to study for the next three to four years. The best analogy I can think of is imagine if you were writing a love letter to someone and you went off and you described how they make you feel like you're on cloud nine all the time but then in the last sort of stanza of this poem -y love letter you decide to talk about the person that sits next to them in class uh, and the first person is going to be pretty unimpressed because you're obviously not that into them because you have feelings for this other person. And the other person is going to be thinking, well, you just spoke about the other person for the mass, vast majority of your love letter. So you're clearly not that into me either. So you're not going to get either of them and you're going to be forever alone. But we don't want you to be forever alone and from this analogy it means we want you to get into university should you want to go, so focus in on your course, don't just make stray comments, really study into what it is you want to study and it will pay off in the long run because when it's 3am and you've got to finish your essays and you run out of your box of brownies, the only thing you're going to have left is academic curiosity to fuel yourself and make sure that you get your work done. Tip number two. Show me your passion, do not tell me your passion. Most personal statements are rubbish at communicating why they are passionate about the subject that they're applying for. And because it seems to be a requirement, show me your passion, tell me your passion uh, about the subject that you're applying for, there's this phrase, I am passionate about, insert course title. I've no idea why this became a trope amongst personal statements, but I've read hundreds of them, and it seems to be a sentence that so frequently pops up Yet, it does nothing for your statement. Imagine if I were to say to you, trust me, so you just told me to trust you, but you have done nothing to demonstrate that I should trust you, because trust is something that comes out of all of the actions that you do that prove you are someone I can rely on. Passion is also an outcome of all of your actions. So instead of you saying, I am passionate about law, you should say that I went off to a county court and I observed um, a judge trying to make a decision on a particular case and I've also re read this theory around jurisprudence and I found the ideas very engaging, particularly this point which then connects to this other piece of literature I read. Those things are symptoms of your passion. You would not have done them if you did not honestly care about your subject. 
and that is what I mean by show your passion, don't say that you are passionate. Tip three, great things are rewritten. And one of the key things you need to do when you're rewriting your personal statement is to cut down the amount of things that you talk to and really focus in on the quality content that's left over to take it from good to exceptional. A common theme that I find in personal statements is that people list like nine things they've done. Uh, I've got a grade eight in this thing. I got this really good grade um, in science. I'm a Duke of Edinburgh award winner. I'm head student, etc., etc., etc. And you've made a list of nine things, giving one sentence to each thing. Instead of that, why not take the three most impressive things and instead of giving each one sentence, you now have room to give each of them three ten sentences each. So what you did why you did it and what you got from it. That will be far more powerful at demonstrating why they should pick you and why you're an exceptional candidate. I like to think of it as your personal statement is dotted with sapphires, rubies and diamonds and what you want to do is get rid of all of the sapphires, focus on your rubies, focus on your diamonds and make them as shiny as possible and then your personal statement will be like this beautifully uh, encrusted piece of jewellery. Maybe that's a little bit too much, but the point is, get rid of the mediocre stuff, focus on the good stuff, and make that good stuff exceptional. Tip 4. Interview preparation. The best way to prepare for an interview is to find someone who knows your subject better than you do and debate with them. The whole point of an interview is for you to have your thinking pushed, and they want to see how far they can push you. How much can you think independently? And what do you do when you're given new information? Do you reassess your argument? And if you think you're right, how well do you defend your argument? And this applies to law, it applies to medicine, it applies to the sciences, it's everything. Now, if you cannot find someone who is better than you in your subject for you to give you new problems or to debate a topic around, like I was in, what I recommend is actually going on to online publications, like The New Scientist or The Economist, just find the relevant one for your subject. And then I want you to read an article, see if you agree with the argument, or see if you agree with uh, the study. And then I want you to go down to the comments, and I want you to find someone's uh, assessment of the article and see if you agree with them or not. And then I want you to come up with an argument and spend five minutes formulating this argument, and then reply to their comment. So you've got to commit something. This is actually a really nice way of engaging with your subject and pushing your thinking forward, because hopefully they'll reply to you, but even if they don't, you've just spent some time reflecting on what your position is within a broader conversation, whether it be around, say, climate change, or whether it be around youth unemployment in the Arab states. One thing that you have to do while you're doing this though, just throw a spanner in the works, is vocalise your thinking. In the interview, and also when you study at Oxford or Cambridge, you'll be asked to talk through your thought process. And uh, it's a skill. It's something that you develop over time. Some people do struggle taking their thoughts and putting them into words that are allowed, um, as opposed to written down. Um, but it's something that gets better with practice, and uh, something that I highly recommend that you try fit in. Tip number five is entrance exams. No surprise here, do the past papers. But if you're like me and you'll be unfamiliar with the test and your score when you do the first past paper isn't as high as it needs to be, uh, this is what I recommend doing to try and increase your score. So first, there are likely going to be two past papers that you can find online, at least two. What I want you to do is take the first one and do it under time conditions just to see uh, what level you are at. And then I want you to run through every single question on there that you got wrong and understand, deconstruct the question, understand why you got it wrong, and then try and get to the correct answer. You're here, you're focusing on quality. You're trying to get as many marks as possible. Don't worry about time. Once you've become familiar with the style of asking questions and why it is that a right answer is actually a right answer, then you have the second paper to do to see the extent to which you've improved. If you want to supplement this further before you do the second paper, because you may only have uh, two papers and you don't want to waste this one, Try and get some of these books that you can get available, you can find them on Amazon, that dive into that particular entrance exam. And if money's short, I recommend buying it and then selling it back again so it's really like a couple of pounds that you would have made as a loss of um, the original purchase price and it's like you renting the book. The reason why I recommend this is because they are full of a wealth of different questions which will allow you to take on all the different challenges that that paper might throw at you. That's what I did and I managed to increase my score sufficiently enough such that I actually got in, and like it was really bad. I was getting like 20 at the beginning, and you need to at least get 60 to even be considered. So, thanks for watching the five top tips, and best of luck with your application. Uh, one thing to just say is well done and congratulations so far. The fact that you're watching this video shows that you're taking ownership over your future, 
and a theme I've observed is that those people who do not believe that the world owes them anything and take ownership over what it is that they want to do in life and continue to persevere, those are the ones that start seeing that the things that they want to achieve in life actually start to fall in place. So uh, well done on carrying on down that path and all the best with your application. Here's that link that I promised. If you'd like a summary of everything I've discussed here in slightly more depth, along with loads of other material around the personal statement, entrance exam advice, interview preparation, uh, I'll also include that in the download. So, best of luck. There's not really much else I can say um, other than that. Uh, feel free to ask questions down in the comments. I will reply to them and uh, see you later. going to be at least two half papers, half papers, half papers.